Hi, my name is Alan Prost, and I'm going to do a demonstration today on the effects of ventilator controls on inspiratory flow in the mode of pressure control. In the mode of pressure control, what we establish with our patient is we set up a pressure gradient between the PEEP or the uh, base airline pressure and the peak inspiratory pressure. So by setting up a pressure gradient, we inflate the lungs to a specific pressure. That pressure gradient results in a certain tidal volume delivery, and we, when we create a pressure gradient, we create flow, an inspiratory flow, and that's what we're going to look, in, look at and be examining today, is our inspiratory flow. So our basic setup today is we have the mode of pressure control established on our Draeger Avita XL ventilator. I've got just a room air oxygen. We've got a 1.5 second inspiratory time, and I'm going to show you what happens when we change the the inspiratory pressure when, and when we change the pressure gradient between 25 and 5 of P, or a baseline of pressure. I'm also going to show you the effects of altering the slope. You can see we've got our basic waveforms here. We've got our uh, inspiratory pressures. We've got our inspiratory flow, which we're going to be talking about in great detail, and our tidal volume delivery. Over here on our patient side of the demonstration, I've got our basic circuit coming from the Vita XL going through an 8.0 endotracheal tube. So that's creating a resistance for our system. On our Michigan test lung, we have here a compliance of 0.03 liters per centimeter of water pressure. And I'm going to show what happens when we lower or decrease the compliance and when we um, increase the resistance for demonstration. So in this short video today, I'm going to be demonstrating some of the factors that affect inspiratory flow and the time constant. I want you to keep in mind some of those key equations, such as the time constant equals the compliance of your patient times the resistance of your system. All right? We're going to look at how, when we change ventilator controls, this will affect inspiratory flow and time constants. Things such as the ramp control, the pressure gradient, or the pressures set by on the ventilator as compared to your baseline pressures, so that delta pressure difference controls our tidal volumes. We're going to look at patient factors such as resistance and compliance and see how those affect inspiratory flow and our all-important time constant. So let's take a moment and get orientated to our different waveforms that we're going to be looking at on the mechanical ventilator. we got our pressure, our flow, and our volume. And these are going to show us our control interactions and what's happening with our patient. So it's called waveform analysis. So let's take a little bit of a detailed look at this. We've got our inspiratory phase, we've got our expiratory phase, and that results in our I to E ratio. All right, you can probably hear the amount of inspiration to exhalation. We've also got here our TI dynamic between these two points in here, and this is our inspiratory pause, and I'll show you how we get derived those. So initially, what's happening is we have established our pressure gradient. We set our pressure control level at 25. We set our baseline pressures at 5. And this gave us a pressure gradient. And we know from studying our equation of flow equals P1 minus P2. In this case, it's P mouth minus P lung. And divided by the resistance gives us our inspiratory flow. So let's see what pressures we're talking about here. Now initially, you can only see our mouth pressures shown here in black, and that is our P mouth. All right, that's our ventilator pressures. What we can't see is I'm going to draw on this green line here, and that is our lung pressures. All right, and why that's important is because this peak flow here, this peak flow here is the result of that P mouth minus our p-lung, all divided by our resistance. That gives us that peak flow. Now initially, this is like 25 minus 5 divided by our resistance, so it's a very high number, so we get our high peak flow. So initially, we've got very high pressure gradients, giving us a high peak flow. Now, as we get moving along down in here, you can see that the pressure gradient gets smaller. Pressure gradient. So our P mouth is going to stay at 25, but our now 
the volume is going into our lungs, the pressure is going to be increasing in the lungs, so it's going to get up, go up and become a larger number. So now the pressure gradient isn't as great, so our flow is going to be lower than it was before. And this continues until we have complete filling of the lungs, and now our flow is going to equal zero because our lung pressures and our mouth pressures are the same. So that gives us a flow in here of zero or no flow whatsoever. So the concept of this and how long this filling takes place is a term called our time constant. And we know that the time constant is compliance times resistance. And it takes about five of these to get total filling. So that time constant is a reflection of how long it takes to get equilibrium between mouth pressures and lung pressures. Now that's a lot to think about, isn't it? So with our present settings, we're getting pressures of 25. We get a baseline pressure of 5, so that's a pressure gradient of 20 that results in our inspiratory flow and also our volume being delivered to our patient. In this case, about 800 mils. So we're going to now compare these when we make changes on the mechanical ventilator with our controls and our patient characteristics to see how this alters our inspiratory flow. So what I'd like to demonstrate for you now is what happens when we change that, that slope or that ramp, as some ventilators call it. So we're going to look on our settings right here. All right. And we see our slope defaults to 0.2 seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that dramatically to 0.7 seconds. Right. And I think what you'll see is uh, you're going to see a softening of that inspiratory flow. It takes a little longer to put it in, so our time constant is a little longer, and that inspiratory flow is going to be dampened and smoothed out. Now clinically, I'm not sure how often we, we do this, but it is something to be aware of, and maybe you'll find a good utilization for this for certain patients. So. We see that with the tidal volume is still being delivered because we still have an inspiratory pause. So we have equilibrium between the pressure set on the ventilator, which is 25, and our base airway pressure, which is 5, or our PEEP is 5. Now, one of the first things we did altered on our mechanical ventilator is we changed the slope. And what we did was we increased that from 0 0.02 seconds, we increased that to be I think it was about 0 0.7 seconds. So by increasing our slope like that, the result of that was that our inspiratory flow was dramatically reduced. It's dramatically reduced. So it's quite a bit smaller and it's smoothed out. And this cut in too, you notice that um, our time constant here, which is uh, how long it takes to get equilibrium, was expanded. So we actually have a smaller, a decreased, inspiratory pause. So that gives us less time for distribution of ventilation. We're still achieving our pressures of 25 over 5. We still got the same pressure gradient. We're still getting, because we have equilibrium between mouth pressures and lung pressures, we're still getting the same tidal volumes. We're still getting the same basic pressures. But our inspiratory flow now has been decreased a little bit and softened. And of course, our time constant, the time it takes to get equilibrium between lung pressures and mouth pressures has been expanded. Now in the mode of pressure control, one of our primary ways of controlling the ventilation of the patient is to set up a pressure gradient between our base airline airway pressures, which is our PEEP, and our peak pressures, which is set with our pressure control level. That pressure gradient gives us that tidal volume. That, coupled with the rate, is one of our primary mechanisms for changing minute ventilation and controlling the airway pressure. So when we change that uh, pressure gradient, it also has an effect on our peak inspiratory flow. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. We're going to change our peak flow right now, our peak inspiratory pressure uh, from 25. We're going to make quite a dramatic change. And the only thing we're going to change, we're going to drop that to 15 centimeters of water pressure. So now my delta pressure change is only 10 centimeters of water pressure, where before it was 20. So we're having that. And let's see what the effect is. All right. 
So we're going to see that we've got a decrease in our peak inspiratory flow. We've got a decrease in our tidal volume, and of course, it's because we've got a smaller pressure gradient being delivered to the lungs. Now a common thing to do with a mechanical ventilator is that we're going to lower or change the pressure relationship or the, the pressure gradient between the pressure control level and the baseline pressures. So when we decrease that, in this case we went from 25 down to 15 centimeters of water pressure, what the result of that was is that, as you can see here, we've got a decreased, we've got a decreased inspiratory flow. We've got a decreased tidal volume delivery. All right, because we're not putting as much lung pressures into the lung. Now, a very important thing to to realize, though, is that this time constant stayed exactly the same. The time it took to get equilibrium between mouth pressures and lung pressures is exactly the same. Even though the flow rate is less, the tidal volume delivered is much less, our time for equilibrium is the same. So our, our TI dynamic did not change when we lowered or increased the pressure control levels or the delta pressure being delivered by the mechanical ventilator. That's a lot to think about. You might have to play this once or twice. So now I'm going to demonstrate for you how changes in our patient's setup or conditions affect inspiratory flow. So right now we have an 8.0 endotracheal tube in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce that to a 6.0 endotracheal tube and we'll see what the effect is on our inspiratory flow. All right. So right now I've got the compliance set at 0.3 liters per centimeter of water pressure. We're going to leave that alone right now. So let's just see what happens when we change our resistance in the system, which is our patient endotracheal tube in this example. Now in this situation, what we did was we increased the resistance. We went from an endotracheal tube, an 8.0 endotracheal tube, to a 6.0 endotracheal tube, which resulted in increased resistance and quite a dramatic increase in resistance. So our pressure gradient that we were delivering to the patient stayed the same. We had our pressure set at 25, our baseline pressures at 5, or a PEEP of 5. And the result of that was a decrease in inspiratory flow. Because remember that pressure gradient is less, so, and or is the same, but because we have increased resistance, our equation is going to give us, and the result of that is going to be a decreased inspiratory flow. Now, the baseline pressures, or the um, time constant, is going to be altered as well. Because remember, our time constant equation is equal to resistance times compliance. So if we increase the resistance, we're going to increase our time constant. Compliance is going to stay the same. So that relationship is being proven by our observations here on the mechanical ventilator. We can see that we've got this increase in our time constant. It's not great. Now, technically, because we still have an inspiratory pause here, we should have had equilibrium between mouth pressures and lung pressures. And we didn't change the compliance of our patient, but you'll notice here our tidal volumes are a little bit less. And I believe this is because our inspiratory flows were so declined that and so softened because of our, um, our uh, slope that we still didn't quite get all the uh, volume delivery, even though it showed us here that we were getting an inspiratory pause. So I'm having a little bit of a difficult time understanding why the tidal volume would have been less. But that's why we do experiments. All right. Because in my opinion, when we had an inspiratory pause, with our pressure gradient being the same, tidal volume should have also been the same. But our flow rates are decreased, and our time constant has been increased. The last parameter I'm going to change for us in our demonstration today is a change in the patient's compliance. Right now we're at 0.03 liters per centimeter of water pressure, and I'm going to decrease the compliance by changing the position of this spring here, and I'm going to now alter that 
to 0 0.01 liters per centimeter of water pressure, and let's see what effect that has on our inspiratory flow. So in our last demonstration, I'm showing you the results of what happens when we decrease compliance. Initially, we had a compliance of uh, 0.3 liters per centimeter of water pressure. And what we did was we decreased that to 0.01 liters per centimeter of water pressure. So the result of that is, uh, when we look at the flow, is that initially the peak flows are maintained. It's a slight drop here due to the slope, but the pressure gradient between the mouth and the lungs has been maintained, so peak flow is pretty well maintained. What we see is a dramatic change in our inspiratory pause that's been lengthened, so we have an increased inspiratory pause. We have a decrease in our time constant, and that's one of the really important things to note, is that we have this decrease in our time constant because we have reduced compliance. If remember that equation. So the result of uh, decreased compliance is that we have an, uh, a decreased time constant and we have an increased inspiratory pause. Our TI dynamic has been reduced. We have a dramatically decreased tidal volume as well because the lungs are much stiffer. So even though we put in the same pressure gradient, we're getting the re a result of a much smaller tidal volume. So in conclusion, what I wanted to do with this little demonstration is show you how some of the control interactions and patient factors affect inspiratory flow and uh, some result in some changes to our ventilation of our patient. So when we increase dramatically the slope, remember we went from a 0.2 baseline to a 0.3, there was no change in our peak inspiratory pressures delivered. We still achieved an inspiratory pause, but our peak inspiratory flow was dramatically decreased. It softens out that inspiratory flow it increased our time constant, or the time it took to get equilibrium between mouth pressures and lung pressures. But our tidal volume was still maintained because there was no change there because our plateau pressures, 25 over 5, and our delta pressures were maintained. We still had that inspiratory pause. When we changed the pressure control levels and we decreased the delta pressure, we went from 25 to 15, what we saw is that we, by decreasing this pressure gradient, we also um, decreased the peak inspiratory flow. The difference between the lung pressures and mouth pressures was also decreased. The time constant, interestingly enough though, was no effect. There was no change in our time constant. It took the same amount of time to get equilibrium between lung pressures and mouth pressures. Tidal volume, of course, was decreased because the pressure gradient and the amount of pressure being delivered to the lungs was decreased. When we increased resistance dramatically, our peak inspiratory pressures were not changed. We still maintained the same 25 over 5 as set on the ventilator. Our peak inspiratory flows were dramatically decreased because of that increased resistance. And our time constant was also um, dramatically increased because it took so long to get the breath in past that high resistance. Tidal volume was maintained, even though in our experiment it shows that the tidal volume went down slightly. When I've used other ventilators, it's generally maintained almost exactly the same. So I think there was only a minimal change in tidal volume. When we decreased compliance, again, we altered that equation. So decreased compliance resulted in the same, no change in our pressure gradients. We didn't change our controls on our ventilator. Peak flow was uh, actually maintained because the pressure gradient between the mouth and the lungs were maintained the same, but our time constant uh, was dramatically decreased. So a decreased time constant resulted uh, in uh, the same peak flows, but they were only on for a short duration. And tidal volume, of course, was dramatically uh, decreased because we had such stiff lungs. Remember now, these are all based on that important equation that the flow is equal to the mouth pressures, the difference between mouth pressures and lung pressures divided by that resistance. The time constant is altered whenever we alter compliance or resistance. It takes about five time constants to achieve uh, equilibrium between mouth pressures and lung pressures. So we usually need about five of those to get equilibrium, three to five. 
And so it's a small change, but it's still important for us to know clinically. Thank you very much.